Sorry, we're... And what were you saying about this? Lots of times it says infertility, infertility, finally, positive, fertility. Yes. yes. We're looking for fertility. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, we were navigating the whole hospital, like, yeah, go down this long Yeah, I know, hall. so I can't believe we're not filming this. It's been like a 20 minute journey just to get to this point in the hospital. Yeah. But so this is, you know, we're at McGee Women's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, with that for an initial appointment. Yeah. Good job, you. Alright, what do you think? Well, so far it just looks like a hall. <laughs> yeah. It's clean. It's clean. And it's hopping. It's hopping at 8 Yeah, it's hopping. Not in this hallway, but no. in it's the elevator. In the, yeah, in the morning. When we... Okay, here we go. We're here. Understanding fertility, page one. <laughs> you don't understand it. You will never understand it. They don't know. They, no, no one, one knows. knows. <laughs> no one knows. No one knows. This is what we learned today. This is what we learned. No one knows. <laughs> okay, so here are our impressions from McGee Women's Hospital. Number one, I think that because of everybody's past experiences, McGee is really trying. Like, yeah. it felt like everybody was like, really? how do you feel? Like, how do you feel? Very nice, very attentive. Yeah, I think they were almost overcompensating. Which was good because we had gone in sort of thinking they were going to be awful. Yeah, because we've, we've heard uh, horror stories from friends and, and, other, and others, you know, that you have to advocate for yourself that McGee is not the friendliest and especially to LGBT, LGBT. couples and um, so we were not expecting a lot yeah um, so the biggest thing between uh, the private practice and, and McGee was the time we were there for two hours um, to kind of get through that appointment um, it just it just just takes a lot of time when you're in a bigger institution which so that's different from our uh, the small clinic that we had been uh, working with to do our blood work for the IVF is that they were so small they had a small amount of patients so right. when our appointment was there they took us right back and we were seen and we were out of there in a really quick yeah. turnover time um, there's a lot of more, there's a lot more formality with this clinic so with the with our visit in the first clinic and you, you'll if you've been watching you saw the first video we were we had the consultation and we had a um, game plan for but and we had a whole f appointment like yeah and he did blood work there they did, did an my, exam yeah. they mm -hmm. did a whole thing all in that in that one visit with today we have to do all kinds of extra visits we have to go we were see given a, a checklist so th we have to see a counselor we have to do blood work we have to have um uh, uh, STD done, training, and training, and so it's a, there's a lot more formalities and mm -hmm. and hoops and things um, like that. Yeah, and they're clearly set up for heterosexual couples, so I have to get tested. But okay, um, and you weren't too happy about the counselor either. No, I mean. I see both. It's nice that they're forcing couples to talk about it. I get it. Great, that's great, but. Fair enough. It's, but it speaks to a large facility, right, that's just churning out, that sees a ton of patients, versus a small facility that can really, right, do a, a catered and individualized, you know, program for you. Yeah, so, so today we saw um, the intake nurse who did our information and was horrified about us being dropped after our... Uh, after our negative beta, beta and she went to bat to try to get our medical, medical records re because I have not been able to get a hold of someone to get my medical records from Which our last clinic really a shame so then we saw an intake another intake nurse and then we saw a PA and then we saw Dr. Katari plus a, I, I'm guessing a med student who's that shadowing her like a med student. and yeah. then another nurse so we saw six different people people today so that was, um, but I, I do have to say that everybody seemed to be extra cautious. Um, I think that they must be hitting a lot of negative reviews from, from past. And I mean, we went in there thinking that it was going to be awful. We did. So they kept saying, you know, we're really trying, trying. we're really trying, yep. we're really trying to do, you know, how do you feel? Do you have any questions? We're really trying to be, um, yep. 
So I, I appreciate them. Yeah, the, there's everything. They were great. They explained everything. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was. They were lovely. And I mean, it's standard. It's not like they told us anything we didn't know. Nope. I mean, we're we're pretty uh, well versed in everything that needs to happen for this. Yep. Um, they talked more about our CMV status, um, which in our last clinic they were like, "Oh, Doesn't we're not matter. we're not really worried about it." And we were really concerned initially beforehand about that. About that, and then with IVF, it, it then they said it was a non-issue. So it's interesting that it's now with a new clinic, it's something that they're looking at looking at yeah. again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, we're, so with this one, we're leaving with, um, a laundry list of things to do before we can start. Um, whereas in the last one, they're like next cycle, we're going to do a mock cycle. So there, there's differences. Small private clinic versus a big, Mm -hmm. you know, institutionalized clinic. And we also have the fact that this possibly could be covered by our insurance for going through McGee women's hospital. Um, it associated, but as far as insurance goes, poor Stephanie has like (laughs) been going to bat, trying to get an answer. Every single person that she's talked to answer. Yeah. A different answer. Every Every time she's called and you know, they're the least, uh, LGBT friendly folks. Um, yeah, different answer every time, even though I've uh, I've gone up, I'll, I'll keep going, but I've gone up as far as it feels like I've gone um, up the UPMC health insurance Ladder, train, yeah. yeah, that I can go. Um, I've been emailing with the gal who actually, like, runs our entire, like, the health plan for our university. So I submitted my questions ahead of time, and so they could really find answers, and that was about two weeks ago, and then I finally talked to someone today, or yesterday rather, and they were very wishy-washy. They were like, eh, this could be covered, this is kind of, maybe, I don't know, or you could try this, and I was like, no, that's, you mean, is it covered or is it not covered? That's the whole point of submitting the questions, and with insurance, it's pretty black and white. You either cover it or you're not going to cover it, so um, go, we'll go back for another round and say, hey, you got you know, differing answers from different people trying to find out what's covered, what's not covered. Um, yeah, it's just, it's quite the, it's hard. And I think that we're at a point where burnt out, right? Like you feel yeah. burnt out as you know, and I do. that's, and that's hard. And I think that, you know, um, even though we keep alluding to these in these videos that we're not talking about the emotional contact, it's because we're burnt out and it's been right. very hard. Um, I think that we are both in very different places. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I think that with my change of job, um, that changed the dynamic as well. You know, uh, you know, I know it's a lot of pressure on Stephanie right now. And, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And she's mustering up the the best she can. And um, one foot in front of the other. Yeah. But I I think that there's just a lot of a lot of factors here. And there are a lot of factors. And it's just, you know, it, it, it's been relentless. I mean, you know, we started this how long ago? If you've all been following, you know. Like, but it's, you like know, last, it's, it's almost relentless. been a year. Like, back in August, we had our consultation with CNY. And, and that was it. We were off and running. So, it, you know, it's not like we, there, we didn't stop. You know, it's just been ongoing. And lots of changes on top of it, right? You know, going through work and a show and mm-hmm. Caitlin changing jobs. And it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Whew, this process is really quite the emotional roller coaster. Well, if you're still following along, you should hit that subscribe button and so that you can keep track of all of our TTC journey. Uh, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Musics.